Okay, um, next up is um, HCR 218HR174, urging the United States Congress to award the Congressional Medal of Honor to John Kuule Kauhaihau of Honaunau, Hawaii. Um, that is on uh, Hawaii Island, members. Um, and although we don't have her on the agenda as uh, testifying, we are blessed to have the um, the wife of Lieutenant Kauhai Hao, um, Shirley, here today. So we'd like you to come forward, Shirley, and... Well, thank you, Representative Takai. Um, I've never done this before, obviously, and so I really am not sure how we start. But thank you very much for um, initiating this, this effort. My family appreciates it. That after 40 plus years, someone feels that John is deserving of uh, the honor. Well, first of all, he was a wonderful husband, father especially, son, and a member of our military, especially the National Guard, Hawaii Army National Guard. He joined the unit um, shortly after his 17th birthday, while he was still a junior in high school. And uh, the National Guard was very important to him. Um, we were very young when we started our family. We both left high school to start a family and uh, over the years, by the time he left for activation, we were the parents of four young children. At the time of his death in September of 69, our oldest was nine and our baby was four. Two girls and two boys. In 65, we both decided that we needed to get our high school equivalency uh, certification done. And so I, we both started together, but after a while he decided uh, he would wait. So he left, but I completed. In the meantime, he was encouraged by his superiors, his superior officers, to look into attending the officer's candidate school uh, at Cocoa Head, but he needed to be a graduate of high school in mm -hmm. order to qualify. And so he did go back to night school, completed the courses, graduated in 67, early 67, and, and then was, uh, was accepted into the Officers Candidate School. Graduated the 10th of May, 1968, and the 13th of May is when the units all left uh, for Schofield uh, for further training and then finally to Vietnam for a lot of them. So he got to Vietnam in May of 69, and he passed on the 5th of September. His letters home really were mostly about the children and how we, and our family, and how we were doing, whether they were doing well. It was always, every letter had to do with his concerns about his little family, that we were fine, and the allotment was sufficient for us to, to get by until he came home. and uh, very little about what was actually taking place. He did mention, though, that he was always concerned about his, the men he served with, the officers, uh, the officers as well as the men in the company, his, the men of his platoon. At one time, he did say a lot of them in his platoon were 
They referred to them as greenies because they were in country for just a very short time. And he was always concerned about their safety. The actions of the day I only learned through communication uh, from the officers who served with him and uh, newspaper accounts. One in particular was written by Tom Tidy, who was a reporter with um, the Associated Press. And he did uh, an article about John. And that appeared in the Star Bulletin in January of 1970. And it was wonderful. I questioned the account because I didn't know a lot of the details. And uh, in a response that I received in February of 1970, um, I learned that when John was mortally wounded, a medevac helicopter came in because they couldn't, uh, they had to extract him from the jungle. Uh, he was placed in a, what was called, probably still is, the penetrate, penetrator basket to get him out. Uh, the helicopter was fired upon and then eventually crashed. And when they were able to get to John, um, he'd already expired. But autopsy showed that he died of his wounds, not from the, the crash of the helicopter. As I said earlier, he was a wonderful, caring man. And uh, if this passes, it'll be a tribute to him as a member of our community, our state, and our own forces. And it'll honor every man, woman, who served in the military too. And I thank you all very much for thank this you. effort. Thank you very much you for coming and thanks for uh, telling us your stories. And if uh, members, if you read uh, the results, you'll see some of the heroic efforts that uh, Lieutenant Kauai Hao has done or did uh, for, for many of his men. So thank you very much and we'll keep in thank touch. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to introduce Ms. Shirley Kahai Hao. Accompanying her is her uncle, Mr. George Chu, who is also retired from the Hawaii National Guard. Please stand and be recognized. Shirley is the wife of First Lieutenant John Kuule Kahaihau and is here today because she testified before our VMI committee for HCR 218, urging the United States Congress to award the Congressional Medal of Honor to John Kuule Kahaihau of Honaunau, Hawaii. She has traveled all the way from the island of Hawaii to support her husband's legacy. Let me give you a brief background on Lieutenant Kahaihau. He served with Company B, 2nd Battalion, 8th Cavalry Division, Air Mobile, in the Vietnam War. He protected his men when his company was fired upon, directing them to seek cover. He further took action by returning fire and distracting the enemy, retrieving vital equipment, and helping other wounded soldiers get to safety. Lieutenant Kahai Hao made the ultimate sacrifice by acting in a moment's notice to protect his men from an advancing enemy squad and was mortally wounded. Shirley's steady love and commitment to her husband and family is admirable and her strength has been inspiring. Thank you all for joining us today. There's so much to say about the man. It'll take the entire day, but <laughs> <laughs> that he, he is still a very important part of our lives and always will be. 
although my children were quite young at the time when he passed, um, he is very much a very big, big part of our lives, still 40 some odd years later. Stand by.